a uh, failed Bristol compressor. Um, it's a H23A5503 DBEA three phase, I think. It's an R22. And it looks very burnt in there. This this is quite dark. Should be um, shiny steel coloured that bit. Um, it's got these interesting little plastic DDARs on suction intake. That's one there. A little plastic thing that snaps around. There's actually some holes either side. I don't know what they do. Um, it's held on with a little steel spring clip. See if we can get that lifted out. All right, we've got the uh, compressor lifted out. Once I'd remembered, I needed to cut the discharge pipe um, where it goes down. Probably goes down for a loop, and then comes down to that connection there. Um, that kind of serves the vibration um, loop, and also warms the oil up. Um, probably warms it up quicker than it would do otherwise and drives any uh, um, liquid refrigerant out that's dissolved in there. I mean it's got a crank case here anyway but anyway that's how they were designed. That oil looks like old engine oil. Um, there's some few metallic bits in the bottom there. The first thing I spotted is if we look under here is um, uh, we've lost a rod, so uh, that's what uh, looks like the failure there is. Um, the windings themselves don't look too bad. Um, where they look dark is actually aluminium dust that's in the oil from where that rod smashed up, so this must have run noisy for quite a while. Uh, no, it's actually uh, she rotates, so uh, anyway, we'll see how much more we can get took apart. Right, I've drained all the oil out, there's still a few little bits and pieces in there. Um, these are the bigger chunks. It's a bit of the rod. Side, I think. Uh, some other bits and pieces there. So that might be the little end. Um, Something that's interesting with these I've noticed before is, is the bearings on the top. It's only half the width um, on the bottom. Rather, it's only half the width, or not, um, less. I'm stuck on my fractions now. Let's say three quarters um, of what it is on the top. Uh, it's just starting to rain now. Anyway, we'll see if we can get the head on done. Have a quick look in there. Right, we've had to uh, rush into the stores because it started raining. Um, that noise in the background is um, farmer silaging in the field at the back. Uh, I think it's the first cut of the year. Let's just give this a turn. You can see that bottom cylinder, the left hand one, is the one that's pumping. I think it sucks through the outer ring and it discharges through the centre four holes. I think that's how that works. Right. 
Something hit me on the shoe then, so I don't know what that was. Might have been one of these little pins. Try not to get oil and water on the camera. Um, so that's a suction reed from the uh, good cylinder. Yep. Okay. Right, so that's a suction reed from the good cylinder. Um, it looks a lot more um, gritty, pitted looking. And the power button over that, so I don't look too bad. And there's a bit of a giveaway. Only one of them's moving. And if we put this one at the top of the stroke, the other one should be at the bottom, so we should... Oh, that is pretty seized up in there, whatever's happened. A great big, look at that. That's what's happened there. See that groove in the side of the ball? If we uh, turn that over now because we've. You know what? Yeah, we'll it. Right, well, uh, I can't get that one to move back down the ball so I can bring that one down. But basically, what's happened is the gudgeon pins come loose and it's been wearing on the side of the cylinder block. Um, it's one of them two grooves either side. Um, this side uh, won't have a groove like that. That's, um, and it's got to the point where the rod's given way. So whether it's worn enough for the pin to come completely out of one side of the piston or do something funny, um, or whatever, where it's dropped down it won't go back up again. Uh, so it's basically it seized it up and it's obviously smashed up the rod and run for a bit and I suppose it could be that just the, the motor might not even be burnt out, it could be just shorted out with aluminium um, dust in the oil because I suppose if you get enough in there it's going to be conductive uh, yeah there's quite a bit of the top of the cylinder there you can see of light and uh, camera at the same time. Uh, yeah. I've seen this once before on an old press gold compressor that ran noisy for years and then eventually burnt out. When I took the head off, it had done something similar. Groove on either side. I'll see if I can get it uh, took to bits a bit more, but. Uh, I've got to get apart these things because I think the um, rotors press fit on there are not bolted on. I've only got a small grinder, I've only got like a um, four and a half inch grinder so it's not a sort of thing you can cut these open too easily with. Might take the oil end off and have a look in there. Right, I've finally got the piston out. It looks a bit um, battered on there but see the shape that it's gone to. I'm not sure if these were plain or were they a little bronze um, bush in there or something. But there's quite a bit of play on that gudgeon pin. Right, um, oh, just so that you can see the top of that piston where it's shiny, that's where the top of the conrod's been pushing against it. So that's been hammering away, that must have been hammering away at the head on this, clunking away every time it went round. 
2,900 RPM. Um, so it's hammering on the top of that rod, on the underneath of that piston. That might well have what's made that little end crack. Might have led to that splitting all the way down. We didn't. Don't know really. Um, that's the groove in the side of that block, and I don't know. You can just see them two lines on the other one. The other piston's starting to go the same. Um, put the camera up there. Uh, how did I do this before? There we go. That's got about a good millimetre or two of movement. So that you can actually push that up above the height of the block at the top of the stroke. So that would, would be could be hitting on the head or the valve at the top of each stroke. So whatever has gone on in this cylinder it was starting to happen in this one too.